the second part of the mental models that come in is that uh, uh, Warren and Charlie like to go through long histories of these companies that they, that they study. So uh, with Coke, both of them read every annual report uh, since the company was public. So they, start, they, they read every annual report from 1919, which is when Coke went public, until uh, the, the late 80s, every single annual report. And uh, they got some insights from reading those annual reports. And one of the insights they got was that uh, from the period of 1919 to, let's say, 87, they had, been, they had never been a year when Coke's unit or, or, or cases sold was lower than the previous year. So through the Great Depression, through the Second World War, through the Korean War, through uh, all the stagflation of the 70s, through all of that, unit case volume just every single year went up over the previous year, uh, nonstop. Uh, and, um, and, and, and the second thing that they noticed was that Coke, which started in, uh, in Rome, Georgia, uh, went through this uh, major international expansion. So they were repeatedly, over the years, uh, they were first only in the southern U.S., then they kind of spread out to the U.S. and then Canada, and then they started spreading out. And in fact, World War II took them to all the places where the uh, U.S. Army went. And, um, and so they, f they saw the whole uh, uh, way Coke entered one new country after another and what happened after they entered the country. So they, they, they could see that from the reading of those reports. And what they concluded was that uh, the runway was really long. And, uh, and I'll, I'll get to the runway. So the way they defined the runway uh, from reading Coke is that humans, humans need to ingest water to survive, right? So we need to ingest about 64 ounces of water a day to survive. And uh, humans prefer uh, to consume flavored water over plain water. So at least some portion of that 64 ounces, uh, they prefer to consume flavored versus plain. In fact, Warren's daughter says that she's never, ever seen her dad drink water. You know, she, she, she says she's never seen her dad drink a bottle of water or drink a glass of water. It never happened. Um, and so Warren, I think, what, uh, uh, 40 ounces a day is coming from Coke. I don't know where the other 24 ounces are coming from, but she says water is not part of the deal. And um, so... So if you take the 64 ounces that humans have to drink, uh, they figured that at infinity, you'd probably get to something like 50% of that volume uh, gets consumed in one way or another in a flavored format. And you can take that today where if you look at something like Dasani, which is a Coke brand for water as part of that, so you know some kind of bottled uh, kind of uh, beverage becomes about half of it. And they, they felt that Coke, could probably take 50% of the um, of of half of uh, of that uh, of the of the flavored portion. So 16 ounces uh, per day per person, which is two servings. And um, so they just looked at the unit volume, they looked at the number of servings, they looked at the number of humans, and they looked at that runway, and they said that we've got a long ways to go here. And so you've got basically um, this distribution engine where you can pump a lot of brands through it. You know, Minute Maid and uh, you know, monster and all these, all these things. And uh, world population was growing. So as world population grew, coal consumption would grow. GDP was growing in countries where GDP is very low. So, you know, if you look at a country like Mexico, for example, the per capita coal consumption in Mexico is the highest in the world. It's, it's above the U.S. Um, and there are other countries in the world where they are at one hundredth of Mexico's uh, volume. So, uh, so Coke would grow as it went into new countries, it would grow as GDP grew, it would grow as uh, per capita consumption grew. And um, so that was another part of what they learned from reading those annual reports. And then uh, uh, Warren read this uh, Fortune article, which was written in 1938, about Coke. And the writer of the Fortune article said that, you know, this is a marvelous, marvelous company in 1938, has done so well. And, and then he said, well, of course, the ride's over because the company went public in 1919 at $40 a share, and now that is worth uh, 3300 per share uh, if you, you know, go back to the stock splits and all that. So they said, you know, the, so the writer of that article said, you know, it's great to know that, but, you know, the ride's over. And Warren says the ride was not over because if in 1938 you invested a fresh $40 into Coke, by 1993 it was 25000 uh, So So... You had, you could have missed the first 20 years, and you still had runway after that. 
And so they, another, another model they used was they didn't have an anchoring bias. Uh, a lot of times in investing what happens, and in fact I'm very guilty of that, is uh, we tend to look at kind of past performance of, of, a, of a security and that taints the way we look at it. And actually what you really ought to do is ignore the past, just focus on the future. And so they were really good at not having this bias about, hey, this company's been growing from 1884 till 100 plus years, now we want to invest in it. And 100 years after this company got formed, we're putting one fourth of our capital in, have we lost it? They didn't think about it that way. And, um, and then you know the, some of the other things they, they realized is that the, the company was currency proof, it was uh, asteroid proof, it was thermonuclear blast proof, uh, it was uh, anarchy proof, it was pretty much uh, bulletproof of any way you look at it. So if you think about a situation where uh, you have, let's say, a uh, LE, extension level event, take place, right? so let's say an asteroid comes in, and let's say the asteroid takes out six and a half out of, the, out of the seven billion humans. Let's say we're left with a few hundred million. Well, the Coca-Cola company has a trademark and uh, they have the formula and they will eventually start producing Coke again and they will probably get back into business and, and such. And you could not say that about almost any other business when you have that sort of an event take place. And so even if uh, currencies changed or got devalued or whatever happened, uh, Warren's perspective was that people would be willing to trade two minutes of labor for a Coke. And so the, the trading of labor versus Coke uh, would be independent of, of currency. So that was another um, part, of the, part of the model. And then you know the, the notion that uh, our mouths are a very personal space, right? There's a few spaces humans have kind of very, you know, are very sensitive about. Mouth is one of them. And uh, we're kind of uh, sensitive about what we put into our mouths. And so um, if you see a Coke and you've had it in the past, et cetera, you won't think twice. And even if you're in a different country, you'll have it, no problem. But if you see some kind of unknown brand, it's kind of like, you know, you, you eat Wrigley's chewing gum and then uh, someone presents to you Glotz chewing gum and you know, says, would you like some? You know, you're probably not gonna take it. And uh, so, so the, our mouth is a very personal space and we're not gonna be messing around with trying to take the low bid on what goes into our mouth. So they, they felt that we are creatures of habit. Once we get these habits formed, uh, then we're not gonna be willing to change them, especially with personal spaces like our mouth. And, uh, and the second is about humans are creatures of habit. You know, like we, we, we shave every day on the same side of the face first, or in the case of ladies, the same leg first. We do things in a certain pattern. And, uh, and again, once we get to those habits and patterns, uh, we are reluctant to make those changes. So they, they saw all these things, and they saw all of this was kind of coming together from the reading of the annual reports. And then they looked at the, you know, so. I have already probably gone through maybe 20 or 30 different models they used. We, have, we still have a lot more to go. You know, there's a, there's a, a lot of more models they went through. But in all the models that I've gone through with you, we haven't talked about any numbers. You see, so I, I went through all this stuff about it being a great investment. We haven't talked about numbers, really. Mm -hmm.